We have to strive not to be wretched. There's something that doesn't seem fair about that. Why couldn't we just be happy being who and what we are? Why is it that we're punished if we don't strive? Well, I don't know. I'm, we're negentropic organisms, right? I mean, we have to maintain this incredible complexity in the face of a dissipating universe. It requires effort. The positive emotion that we find sustaining is experienced in relationship to an unachieved goal. It's hope that drives us forward. We want something, and if we see ourselves moving towards that, then we're, we're in the grip of the positive emotion that we find sustaining. It isn't the attainment. Attainment is satiating. Attainment shuts down the system that has been striving for that particular object of attainment. If you're hungry and you eat, you stop being hungry. Now, that's good because the hunger is gone, but that whole frame disappears. You can no longer strive within that frame, and you need a new frame to strive towards. Don't you have a conscience? Doesn't it bother you? And then, can you control it? An answer to that is almost inevitably no. It calls you to account. And why? Well, because you've deviated from the ideal. Whose ideal? An ideal that's making itself known within you, at least in so far as the objection arises. You wake up at three in the morning and torture yourself for your iniquities. And you would think, well, I could just shut that off. It's me after all. But you can't shut it off. You're nothing compared to your conscience. Now, it's strange because you can ignore it. You can not live according to its dictates, but it's not going to leave you alone. I took what I learned about what happened in the Second World War seriously. It's like, wow, we can be really bad. We should do something about that. Like, that was unacceptable. We're getting so powerful that each individual is now a force of almost unimaginable destructive power if they so choose to be. That power is going to continue to increase. And what that means is that the degree to which each of us has our act together is going to be something upon which the world increasingly depends for its maintenance. It's like discipline yourself in one dimension. See what happens. Well, that's exciting. I don't understand, really, and it's really killing me, I think. I might, might mean that literally. I don't understand why I'm so controversial. I can't figure that out. It's very distressing to me. I'm ashamed, you know, of what's happened to me. What do you mean? And I'm very hurt. I'm a very destroyed person in many ways, and so I feel unworthy unworthy of what oh. you name it i hope people find it useful you know i hope it alleviates some unnecessary suffering that's sure. the goal i'm very fortunate in that regard i get letters from people all the time that they open up their hearts you know, it's really something. But I am somewhat nonplussed, let's say, for all this work. I'm pretty broken. It's not easy to know what to do with, you know, the cheers of a million people. It's overwhelming. It's dangerous. I don't think I've unfairly benefited from it. I'm not a hedonistic person. My lifestyle hasn't changed. I think there's more of me outside of me now than there is inside of me. When I put those first videos up, you know, I was, this was bothering me, this piece of legislation. And I talked to my wife and my son sort of casually. I said, well, I'm gonna make these videos, see what happens and famous last words. The best we have might not always work, but it's still the best we have. And the fact that it might not work doesn't mean we should throw it away. It's still the best we have. I mean, everyone dies, and so we fail in some sense. The fact that a symphony ends doesn't mean that it wasn't worth listening to. There's this idea in the Old Testament that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It's a pretty harsh idea. But 
but there's something really useful about it because one of the things you see with people all the time is that maybe they're trying to stumble forward towards their ideal as poorly defined as it might be but then they're afraid right they're afraid about what they might encounter and that stops them because fear does stop people it freezes you like a prey animal and so people move ahead but then they get afraid and then they stop moving ahead and so and that's not so good because negative emotion is a really powerful motivator so we're more motivated by negative emotion than positive emotion quantitatively speaking you can measure that and that's i think because we can only be so happy but we can really be suffering and dead you know so we have to pay more attention to the negative and that's bad because the negative can stop you and then in my clinical practice you know i i often talk to people who are trying to make a difficult life decision and and they they are weighing out the costs and the benefits of making the life decision you know and one of the things i always talk to them about is wait a second that's an incomplete analysis you have to weigh out the benefits and the costs of doing this and you have to weigh out the costs and benefits of not doing it and that's not the same as the zero that you assume that you're starting with right because to not make a decision it also has a cost and sometimes the cost of not making a decision is far worse than the cost of making a decision even if the decision is risky and so one of the things you can derive from that and this is very useful i think is that this is also i think why it's so useful to contemplate your mortality so to speak as you're screwed no matter what you do you know and that actually frees you is that you 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 have path a that has catastrophes and you have path b that has catastrophes and you don't get to have the no catastrophe path but you get to pick which one and that's really something because if you know that there's terrible risk associated with everything that you do and don't do then you can afford to take some risks because you're not you know and this is all within the arc metaphor i'm still making the case that despite the fact that your life is essentially catastrophic you can you can make a covenant with the highest ideal and that will take you through it the best way possible i'm 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 still making that case so then you think okay well i'm trying to make this decision i'm going to go try to do something difficult and isn't that terrifying and then you think yeah but wait a minute what's really terrifying is not doing it and then you think about the cost of not doing it so in the future authoring program we have people do this little meditative exercise which is okay just think about your insufficiencies by your own definition right the way that you don't do what you know you should do about the things that you do that you shouldn't do that you know you shouldn't do beyond a shadow of a doubt right there's some things like that and that that's bad habits and and poor aim and all of the resentment and hatred and aggression and unresolved conflicts and all those things that are dementing you and warping you and then think okay those things get the upper hand man they get the upper hand and they take you the worst possible place you could go in the next 3 to 5 years what exactly does that look like and so you sketch all that out and you think hey i don't want to go there and so the next time that a temptation comes up you think well it'd be a lot better for me if i didn't succumb to this temptation it's like that's kind of weak eh you'd look a little better if you didn't eat like a cheesecake a day or something like that you know that's that's something but it's not the same as i'm going to have diabetes and i'm going to lose my damn leg in 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 5 years if i don't get my eating under control that's motivating and so then the temptation comes along and you think oh how about no seriously how about no not just because a, a higher good would be obtained if i avoided it but because a a terrible catastrophe would be averted if i didn't and so well so you want to get your fear behind you right you want to get it behind you where it's pushing you forward instead of in front of you where it's stopping you and you get your fear behind you pushing you forward by actually thinking through the consequences of not putting your life together and the, the least of those is that you waste it and suffer right because you're going to suffer anyways man so you waste it and suffer that's a bad deal because maybe if you're going to suffer you could at least do something noble and glorious and upright and powerful and honorable and admirable and helpful and and difficult you know that's just so much better and maybe that's good enough so that you think hey you know little suffering it's basically worth it at least it's a way forward you know at least it's a way forward beauty is one pathway towards god and it's and it's and if you can't find another pathway then why don't you use beauty i'm sure most of you do that with music because music is the one thing that modern people can't be cynical about thank god for that and been fascinated by music because of that it it speaks meaning to people right you know i've i've mentioned to people that they should clean up their rooms 
That's become quite the internet meme. But I'm really serious about it because it's really hard to do that. And I've been cleaning up my room, by the way, for about four months now because my life was thrown into such a catastrophe and, and also we were renovating and so. But it isn't just that you clean it up, you also make it beautiful. And be it's really hard to make something beautiful. And it's really worthwhile. And what's really cool is if you learn to make something beautiful, even one thing, if you can just make one thing in your life beautiful, then you've established a relationship with beauty. And then you can start to expand that relationship with beauty out into, into the world, like into other elements of your life. And that is so worthwhile. It's just incredibly, crazily worthwhile. And that's an invitation to the divine. You know, you have to be daring to do that. And people are terrified of it. People are terrified of color. They paint their walls beige. They're terrified of art. They buy some mass produced thing because they don't want anybody laughing at them for their lack of taste. Because what do you know, right? You have to develop it. And so you're going to stumble along and make mistakes to begin with. It's kind of hard on your self esteem, but you're stumbling towards the kingdom of God, that's what you're stumbling towards when you try to make an aesthetic decision and to put something in your life that's beautiful and it's unbelievably worthwhile to do that. Man does not live by bread alone. That's exactly right. We live by beauty. We live by literature. We live by art and literally, not metaphorically, we cannot live without it because life is too dismal and, and, and tragic in the absence of the sublime. So, and ourselves, we have to be sharp so that we can survive properly and orient the world properly and not destroy things, including ourselves. You are somewhere, you're a certain way, you're moving forward, something happens that you don't expect, it blows you into pieces, it introduces chaos, right? You, you face the dragon, you get the gold, or maybe the bloody thing eats you and the story is over, and then, and then you get to where you're going. But then the question is, well, what happens when you get to where you're going? And that's a really important issue because one of the things that happens to people all the time in their life is that they get to where they're going and then they don't know what to do, right? So, for example, you graduate from university. It's like, okay, story over. Who are you now? Who are you the next day? And so, so what happens is when you succeed, then there's a success crisis. And the success crisis is, well, I've run this story to its end. Now what? What you should do when your story comes to an end, when you've achieved what it is that you want to achieve, when you've achieved what you need to achieve, then the next question is, okay, well, now I'm that person or I have that character. What, what do I need to do next? And some of that is always, well, what do I need to give up now? What do I need to let go of so I can move to the next plateau, right? Assuming that your life is a, a sequence of upward moving it's like Sisyphus, except you're actually, each time you climb up the mountain, you get a little higher on the mountain. It's something like that. So it's Sisyphus with an optimistic bent. And, and maybe if you push the rock up the mountain properly and let it roll down, then, and if you do that right, then it's okay. Every time you roll it back up, it's, it's better in some sense. You know, one of the experiences I've had in my life, fairly commonly, in a variety of different ways, this is especially true when I was paying a lot of attention to my dreams, which I did for about 15 years, I guess, something like that. Now and then I would feel like I'd learned some things and had sort of consolidated them. And then before I went to sleep, I'd think, okay, I'm ready to learn something else. It's like, and I didn't say that without trepidation. And usually, because usually when you learn something, you know, it's not that pleasant because you usually learn something about why you're wrong. And the deeper the thing that you learn, the more you learn about why you're wrong. And there's a death that's associated with that because then you have to let that part of you that's wrong die. And that's the sacrifice, right? And so you have to make a sacrifice. You have to be willing to make a sacrifice before you're going to learn something. Perhaps what you'll learn is in proportion to your willingness to make a sacrifice. And I really do believe that. I do believe that as well because I also think that if you commit to something, that means that you don't do a bunch of other things, right? So that's the sacrifice of all those other things. You commit to it and you set your sights on it. If you really commit to it and you get the sacrifice right, so to speak, then the probability that that thing will be successful vastly increases. And I think that that's also not a naive way of thinking or a foolish way of thinking. I, my experience has been that that's the case.